morning. Uh, greetings and welcome to the Bright Side, friends. Your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable and you know you can overcome any health challenge that is why we are here every day on the bright side helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds Recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, if you have a health challenge you or a loved one may be dealing with, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. Try to call in early so we can squeeze in as many calls as possible. We'll get your calls at the bottom of the hour, as we always do on the, on the uh, bright side. 844-236-6010, uh, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have a success story you'd like to share, if you want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, please head to my websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase Longevity products off the websites. We've got blog posts and news stories and videos, as well as the Longevity products. You can also sign up to join the bright side ben team right off the websites as well for a one-time 25 dollars fee you can start a longevity business if you like the entrepreneur lifestyle if you want to be an entrepreneur if you want to make your own hours work out of your home enjoy all the tax benefits associated with having your own business be your own boss and help change the world at the same time by spreading the good word about nutrition and nutritional supplementation the longevity business is for you all for a one-time 25 dollars fee you can start a business and we can help you build your business as well you can sign up right off the websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. And I'd also like to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products, Truth Transdermal C Serum, Transdermal C Balm, Truth Retinol 5% Gel, and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, all made with lots of vitamin C. And by lots, I'm talking up to 70 or 80 percent fat soluble vitamin c stabilized vitamin c moisturizing vitamin c vitamin c that will heal your skin vitamin c that will anti-age your skin vitamin c that will lighten your skin vitamin c that will give you all the benefits you're looking for in any skin health product without any preservatives fragrances fillers waxes oil emulsifier surfactants water nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products are all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side. Last program we were talking about the really idiotic, flawed, blatantly bad, wrong idea that somehow heart disease is caused by cholesterol. If you ever hear a medical professional say something like that, oh, heart disease is caused by cholesterol. You got to stop eating cholesterol. You got to lower your LDL and raise your HDL. We got to give you a pill to do it. This is a red flag for biochemical ignorance, flat out ignorance, if it's a medical professional. If it's a drug company, it's sophistry, it's sneakiness, it's deviousness because they know better. If it's a medical professional, okay, we can excuse their ignorance, maybe. But if it's a drug company, it's just flat out sneaky. Anybody that promotes the idea that you can get better, that you can get heart healthier by 
taking a statin drug or somehow artificially manipulating your cholesterol levels, run. Don't walk away, run. To be clear, cholesterol is not the cause of heart disease. The production of too much cholesterol, that is, is not the cause of heart disease. Any more than flies are the cause of garbage. Yes, there's elevated cholesterol. Yes, there's cholesterol plaques. But it doesn't follow that by suppressing the production of cholesterol, you're going to get better. Yet we're bombarded with this nonsense. This idiotic idea that somehow statin drugs are a remedy, a magical cure, a panacea. And not just for heart disease. Now they want to use it for Alzheimer's disease and for cancer. According to the website, uh, peoplespharmacy.com, really neat website about drugs, peoplespharmacy.com, quote, current guidelines from heart experts insist that virtually every man over the age of 63 and every woman over 70 should be on a statin-type cholesterol-lowering drug, regardless of risk factors, unquote. What planet are we on? How is it possible to be better off by taking a poison? And yes, they're poisons. I'm sorry to say it. They're poisons. Drugs have to be detoxified by the body, flat out. That makes them a toxin. If they need to be detoxified, they're by definition a toxin. Here's all you need to know about the flawed crazy, idiotic idea that it's cholesterol, it's too much production of cholesterol that causes heart disease. Clearly, statin drugs suppress the body's production of this really incredibly important biomolecule, which is very likely the most functional and important chemical in the body, cholesterol I'm talking about. Yes, cholesterol is probably the most functional and important chemical in the body. You can make a case for maybe other chemicals, other biomolecules, but it's hard to argue that there's any more important than cholesterol. So here's all you need to know. All right. Statin drugs clearly suppress cholesterol production, and if the cholesterol theory was correct, then if you suppress cholesterol with a statin drug, we would dramatically reduce the incidence of heart disease. That is not the case. Heart disease is not dramatically reduced by taking a statin drug. According to Dr. David Diamond, professor of molecular pharmacology at the University of South Florida, as well as Dr. Ufi Rabinskov, who's written some amazing books about the stupidity of the cholesterol hypothesis. This isn't just me talking. This is anybody who has any biochemical sense knows it's a stupid, stupid hypothesis. The cholesterol hypothesis. It's a, it is a theory and it's a hypothesis. It's not never been proven anywhere. It's never been proven. Anyway, according to these guys, Dr. David Diamond and Ufi Ravenskov, that's spelled R-A-V-N-S-K-O-V, Ravenskov, it is a, quote, statistical deception, unquote, that has been used to make innocent, that's us, victims and duped doctors somehow believe that statin drugs are effective. And they use this sneaky little trick. It's a statistical manipulation. They call it relative risk reduction which is just this complicated mathematical algorithm manipulation of numbers, which, quote, amplify the trivial beneficial effects of statins, unquote, according to Diamond and Ravenskov. This little drug company statistical manipulation, by the way, the three kinds of lies, there's lies, there's damn lies, and there's statistics. Statistics are deceitful, they're cherry-picked, they're dishonest, and don't pay any attention to them. This little statistical trick changes benefits for one out of 100 individuals who experience one fewer heart attack to mean all of a sudden a 30 to 50 percent risk reduction. So they go from a 1 percent risk reduction to a 30 to 50 percent risk reduction. How this is done involves some clever manipulative sophistry, sneaky tricks that may sell drugs and may sell doctors into promoting them, but it doesn't help us. It doesn't help patients. Doctors Diamond and Ravenskov did an analysis. They examined two separate studies. One was called the Jupiter Trial. Another was called the Anglo-Scandinavian Cardiac Outcomes Trial Lipid Lowering Arm, ASCOT LLA. And so they examined these two studies, the ASCOT LLA study and the Jupiter study, the Jupiter Trial. And uh, they were told, they, they, uh, when they did their analysis, they figured out that less than 1%, per, uh, one percentage point improvement was somehow became this 54% reduction. That was in the Jupiter trial. In the uh, ASCOT LLA style, a 1.1% improvement became a 36% reduction in heart attack. All statistical manipulation, which is why you don't want to pay attention to this statistical nonsense. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll return right after this. Okay, we are back. 
back on the bright side. Pharmacist Ben here, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, if you're on a stand drug, you want to wean yourself off it or any medication, or if you want to help a loved one wean themselves off of any prescription drug. And I've always said that if you are on a prescription drug long term, if you're taking a prescription drug and it's the kind of thing you're going to be on the rest of your life, your number one health goal, your number one health challenge is to figure out how to wean yourself off that drug. You don't necessarily want to just instantly stop taking a drug cold turkey. You always want to inform your doctor. In fact, you always want to tell your doctor what you're doing. You don't have it. You don't need his permission. It doesn't matter if your doctor orders you or tells you he wants you on the drug. It's your body. And if you are on a drug, you're not doing yourself any good. Even if you're manipulating your statistics and your markers and your test scores, you are not doing your body any good because drugs have to be detoxified. If you're on a prescription drug, you want to wean yourself off, let us help you do that. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the Bright Side, you can head to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com and purchase products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team and join me in my mission to educate the world about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. You can make some money doing it at the same time. If nutritional supplementation has made a difference in your life, if you're the kind of person that just likes working with health, likes working with nutrition, the longevity business might be something that you want to think about for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a business, be your own boss, enjoy the tax benefits associated with having your own business. Head to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can sign up right off the website, or you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. Okay, so we're ripping on the cholesterol theory here this morning. And it all has to do with NAC, by the way. I haven't forgotten about N-acetylcysteine. There's a very important role for NAC when it comes to cardiovascular health, when it comes to, when it comes to cholesterol. There's also the homocysteine connection, which we will continue to talk about. And I know I'm a, I get a little excitable when it comes to this whole idea of statin drugs and cholesterol because it's just so mean-spirited. It's just so unfair for the, the, the power of the U.S. government and the FDA and uh, the American Medical Association to, and the drug companies and advertisements to be behind this utter scam is just so anti-human being and just another example of the institution versus the individual. And it's not fair, and I'm not going to stop talking about it. I hope nobody gets sick of it because it's very, very important. Anyway, so Dr. Uvi, uh, Dr. Uvi Rabinskov, Dr. Diamond, these two, uh, uh, I guess you could say cholesterol experts, heart disease experts, they, have, uh, they did an analysis, and this is all published, by the way, in, uh, in uh, where is this published? In the, uh, uh, the Expert Review of Clinical Pharmacology, if you're interested in reading this, the Expert Review of Clinical Ar uh, Pharmacology. This is an article that was titled, Statin Drugs Stimulate Atherosclerosis and Heart Failure. How do you like that? Statin, let me read that again, because that's so amazing. Statin drugs stimulate atherosclerosis and heart failure. This is the title of the article. And they just basically destroy the cholesterol theory. But you don't need to be a scientist to destroy it because cholesterol is a vital compound and you can't get better by suppressing its production, period. Anyway, according to these, uh, these two scientists, statin drug, statin drug use is associated with an, a significant increase in the incidence of breast cancer among women who took statins for more than 10 years. Statins also cause increased rates of cataracts, diabetes, cognitive impairments, and musculoskeletal disorders. And on top of all that, statin drugs can actually cause the deterioration of heart health, making atherosclerosis worse and actually result in heart failure. Their analysis concludes, quote, the adverse effects suffered by people taking statins are more common than reported in the media and at medical conferences and increased rates of cancer, cataracts, diabetes, cognitive impairments, and musculoskeletal disorders more than offset the modest cardiovascular benefits of statin treatment, unquote. Now, you may not believe these researchers, these scientists, or any other of the dozens, hundreds of scientists who've gone on record about the ludicrous, idiotic idea that you can drug yourself back to heart health, you can statin yourself back to heart health, but all you need is a little common sense. You don't need to be a scientist. You don't need to be a pharmacist. You don't need to be a doctor. You just need some common sense. 
And I know we've talked about this a lot, but it's just so crazy. Number one, cholesterol is critical. It's a, it, cholesterol is, in essence, estrogen. Cholesterol is, in essence, testosterone. Cholesterol is, in essence, cortisol, vitamin D. These are all basically cholesterol. Sometimes you'll hear people say, oh, cholesterol is used to make testosterone. I don't even say that. I say it's basically the same molecule. It's a little tweaked, a little bend. Remember, chemistry is all about shapes. And by putting a little tweak or a little bend or sticking a little molecule here, a little molecule there, you get a completely different chemical. They put a little atom of oxygen over there and a little atom of carbon over here, and you get a different molecule. Basically, you have a cholesterol chassis, just like in, when you're making a car. You know, the uh, uh, Ford company makes Jaguar cars, and it's basically a Taurus chassis with a different, different uh, type of door on it or a different type of uh, uh, emblem somewhere on it. But it's basically the Taurus chassis. Likewise with cholesterol. Testosterone is, a cho is the cholesterol chassis with a little tweak. So it's basically the same thing. When you take your statin drug, you're going to be suppressing the production of all of these youth hormones, fertility hormones, growth hormones, repair hormones, stress management hormones, immune building hormones. It's crazy. Number two, cholesterol is required for growth. It's required for repair. It's required for skin health. It's required for brain health. It's required for muscle health. Cholesterol is the quintessential movement molecule. It's the, cholesterol is only made by animals. It's not made by plants. It is, in essence, what distinguishes us from plants. We move, we ambulate, we think, we have a nervous system. All of these are cholesterol dependent. And you're going to take a statin drug to suppress the production of this? If you take a statin drug, you're going to be impairing all of these functions to one degree or another. You may not notice it, but it's not going to do you any good. And considering the fact that everybody who takes one of these statin drugs, or most people for now anyway, that take a statin drug are already compromised. They want to make sure everybody takes statin drugs. That's on the way. But for now, if you take a statin drug or your doctor's prescribing a statin drug, you pr presumably have some kind of health issue. You're presumably compromised somehow. And so now you're going to take a statin drug, and you're going to put this in an already compromised body. It just takes common sense to see this is not a good thing. Number three, statin drugs... Or, uh, cholesterol, or the cholesterol pathway, actually, produces something called coenzyme Q10, a little something called CoQ10, which is unbelievably important for the heart, as well as for the brain, and for the liver, for that matter. In fact, all cells are dependent on coenzyme Q10 for, for energy, heart especially, because it's so energy, it's using and burning through so much energy. Well, guess what? Statin drugs deplete your body of this incredibly important molecule, coenzyme Q10. And by the way, if you are, God forbid, taking a Lipitor, and I'm sure some, you know, a lot of you guys probably are on a statin drug, Lipitor, Mevacor, whatever you're taking, Zest, uh, a Crestor, take coenzyme Q10 with it. And while you're at it, make sure you're taking vitamin E with it. Make sure you're taking magnesium with it. If you start using nutrition, you'll be able to take less drugs. This is one of the great benefits of getting on a nutritional supplement program, like the one designed by Doc Wallach and the one you can find out about at criticalhealthnews.com, pharmacistben.com, or brightsideben.com. It will help you take less drugs. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844 is our number. We'll return on the Bright Side right after this. Okay, we are back on the Bright Side. Thanks for joining us, friends. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive pages at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. Also have longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com, as well as blog posts, news stories, videos, and uh, the longevity products. And you can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off our websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com. If you like what you hear on this program, this is what longevity is all about. We're about changing lives, using nutrition, and using health strategies, using dietary strategies, and using lifestyle strategies as well. It's not just about nutrition. It's not just about foods and diet, as important as those are. It's about lifestyle. It's about how you think. It's about how you feel. And it's always going to involve some aspect of spirituality. I don't talk about that anywhere near as much as I'd like to, but they're all important when it comes to good health. SMEP, S-M-E-P, spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical. 
All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls here in just a sec. A couple of interesting stories. Speaking of spirituality from Coventry University, meditation and yoga can reverse DNA reactions which cause stress. A new study suggests mind-body interventions such as meditation, yoga, and Tai Chi don't simply relax us. They can reverse the molecular reactions in our DNA. That is, they are epigenetic. And this is so important. We get convinced, we get bamboozled by this idea that our genetics are just fixed and that it's in our genes. The fact of the matter is, is that genes turn on and off. The genetic idea, the genetic theory, it's, uh, it's called the central dogma. Dogma meaning it's not proven. Dogma meaning, meaning it's taken on faith is not true. Our genes turn on and off like Christmas tree lights based on the environment that the cell is sitting in. That environment is modified by nutrition, by health, by uh, meditation, yoga, breathing, relaxation responses. These are the primal ways that we can stay healthy. That's why this program is called The Bright Side. Yeah, I'm ripping on drugs and I'm ripping on the medical model and I rip on drug companies. I do it all the time. But the good news is, is we have control. The good news is, is getting healthy, is, it's in, in the realm of possibility via our lifestyle, how we live our lives. It is so powerful for anybody who's dealing with a chronic long-term illness or taking care of somebody who's dealing with a chronic long-term illness. We have power because the human body is adaptable. It adjusts. It adjusts to the environment that it's in and it adjusts via its genetics. Our genetics are responsive to the environment. It's about the field. Einstein said this. It's about the field. It's about the environment. It's about where the cells are sitting in or what the cells are sitting in. All right, from, uh, let's see here. This is from the University of Chicago School of Medicine. Antibiotics taken late in pregnancy can increase the risk of IBD, that is irritable bowel disease, in offspring. If moms take antibiotics, According to this study, late in pregnancy, but I say any time in pregnancy, you are running the risk of throwing off the microbiome, the universe of bacteria that live in a baby's gut. And that will put your baby at risk later on in life for irritable bowel disease. And you got to wonder how many folks are dealing with irritable bowel disease or celiac disease or ulcerative colitis because moms unknowingly and innocently took antibiotics while they were pregnant. Don't take antibiotics ever unless you need them, unless you absolutely need them. You know, it sounds, you know, it sounds logical, right? But we take them all the time. We take them if we have a sniffle. We'll take an antibiotic. Not, fortunately, not so much anymore. Moms, be very careful of prescription drugs, all prescription drugs, including seemingly benign ones like antibiotics, which are not benign. All right, 844 is our number. Let us go to Wyoming. Good morning. Welcome, Ron, to the Bright Side. How you doing, Ron? Hey, Ron. Hey, Ron. What's up, man? Oh, geez, I didn't think I was going to get through, so <laughs> anyway. You're not you ready. Today? What's going on? How can well, we help you, Ron? Well, it's kind of funny that you're talking about the um, statin drugs because that is the one drug that I am taking. It's uh, atorvastatin. Okay. And um, through the years, I've taken, you know, Lipitor and Crestor, and I've tried to do it with diet, you know, and, and my my parents both had, you know, according to the medical um, community or whatever, they, they were both over 300 with their cholesterol, and so was I. And uh, I was at 335 at one point, and okay. um, I started taking it about a year and a half ago. Went in, I do a blood test every year, and I went in, and my cholesterol has dropped down to a little bit over 200. Um, anyway, I hear you talking about different. Um, products out there and, and I'd like to get off of it. It's like I said, it's the only uh, medication that I take other than It's easy. Advice. It's super easy, so, Ron. First of all, what's your height to weight? Um well I'm short and stocky. I mean I'm mus muscular built. I'm five like five eight, five seven and a half, five eight and okay. I'm about two Okay now, and how old are you Ron? I'm 57 years old, and I've Any always been athletic and, okay. you know, okay. muscular. I'm a little bit overweight, slightly overweight, you know. That's but, it. Uh, That's all you got to do. The overweight thing, I'm not beating you up for weight, but what happens as we get older is our body stops responding to insulin. This is the reason why cholesterol goes up. I didn't get a chance to talk about it. I'll probably talk about it tomorrow. The main reason why cholesterol goes up is because our blood sugar rises and, our ins and we become resistant to insulin. That's the real problem. 
is blood sugar or so-called dysglycemia. And that means dys, D-Y-S, means messed up. Glycemia means blood sugar. Dysglycemia is the problem. Now, when you're dysglycemic, when your blood sugar's messed up, your cholesterol will rise. And there's some really fascinating reasons why that is. Blood sugar and insulin signal the body that it should be growing. Cholesterol is a growth substance. That's, the, that's really the key here. Cholesterol is a growth substance. It's a, it, it's a way that we get powered to live our lives is via cholesterol. Weightlifters will have higher cholesterol than, and athletes will have higher cholesterol than regular folks. You'll have higher cholesterol when you're recovering from surgery, when the body has to heal. Cholesterol is a healing, growth, anti-aging substance. And when we eat a lot of sugar and when we become resistant to insulin, it kind of tricks the body. It fools the body into thinking it's supposed to be growing. So we're sending the body signals that it's supposed to be growing, but we're not working out or we're not growing or we're not building muscle. We're not repairing. So cholesterol rises unnecessarily. It doesn't follow that by suppressing the cholesterol, you're going to be out of the woods because as long as your blood sugar is high and as long as your insulin is, and you're, as long as you're resistant to insulin, you're still at risk. This is why diabetes have higher major risks of heart disease. So what you want to do is you want to focus on blood sugar. That's the key. Now there's a supplement called niacin, which works with the blood sugar system. It's very, very important for helping the body process sugar. In fact, niacin, also known as vitamin B3, is part of something called the glucose tolerance factor, which is a chemical that the body, or a, a, a complex that the body uses to process glucose, to process sugar. It turns out that niacin is not only a part of the glucose tolerance factor, but it also lowers cholesterol. In fact, it used to be used as medicine before the statins came out. Before the statin drug mania hit us in the late 1980s, doctors would actually prescribe niacin. And we used to keep niacin in the pharmacy. When I graduated pharmacy school in 1986, it was in the pre-Mevacor days, or Mevacor just came come out, that was the first statin drug. We used to use niacin for lowering cholesterol. Plain old niacin, vitamin B3. Now, I, you need more than just niacin, but just that alone will make a significant difference. Reduce your blood sugar, use chromium and vanadium. That'll also help you do, uh, help you do help your blood sugar work. Use your omega-3 fatty acids. That will also help. And change the way we eat, that's so important more protein, more ketogenic, and less processed foods. That's really the problem. It's not that your body's making too much cholesterol. It's the reason that your body's making excessive cholesterol that we need to be taking care of. Ron, I hope I helped you. If you want to hang on, we'll, get, we'll finish up when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Benny, 44236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Side, uh, 844-2366-6010 is our number. Ron dropped off. Tomorrow we'll, we'll talk uh, about real strategies that you can use if you want to protect your heart. There are strategies that you can use to lower cholesterol that have nothing to do with drugs. The best way, as I was saying to Ron, to lower your cholesterol levels and blood fats is to support blood sugar. Blood sugar number one, or digestive health number one, and blood sugar number two, that's really the cause of all chronic health challenges. I, call, I came up with something I call the triangle of disease, which are the three points of bodily breakdown that underlie all chronic long-term illness. The three points are the digestive system, the blood sugar system, and what I've been calling the adrenal thyroid complex. But if you want to simplify even further, it's really just the digestive system and the blood sugar system. That's all you want to focus on. It's all you need to focus on. Yeah, the adrenals and the thyroid are important, but they will, uh, adrenal health and, and, uh, and thyroid health follow blood sugar health and digestive health. So if you want to super simplify health, if you want to get yourself off your drugs, if you want to avoid having to deal with a doctor, and I recommend everybody avoids as best as possible dealing with the medical model, including doctors. And they're nice people, by the way. It's not like they're bad people. It's the model that's wrong. Work on your blood sugar and work on your digestive system. Change the way you eat. And, that, and by the way, working on your blood sugar means changing the way you eat. So it all comes down to changing the way you eat and supporting the way you process food. Restrict your sugar, use B vitamins and, and uh, blood, sugar, blood sugar processing nutrients, chromium, vanadium, selenium, and such. Use probiotics, good bacteria, eat fermented food, calorie restriction. This isn't complicated, people. And by the way, new article here. Heart failure is associated with loss of important gut bacteria. This is from the German Center for Cardiovascular Research. 
Messed up gut bacteria now are associated, we now know is, is linked to heart disease. When was the last time your cardiologist put you on a probiotic? Never. All right. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Oregon and say good morning to Mary. How you doing, Mary? Is this my friend Mary from Portland? Yeah, this is your friend Mary. But Hi, I'm Mary. Am I going to see you at the, you're going to be at the Longevity Convention? Yes, I am. Awesome. Be good to see you. What's going on this morning? I have checked everywhere. I, so this is important that I'm not in Portland, but I've checked at every health food store within 150 miles north and northeast of me. And when I walk in and ask for bile salts, they all look at me like... Um, <laughs> like you're crazy? I, yeah, and they give me cell salts. No, bile, B-I-L-E, also known as bile acids, not bio, bio, B-I-L-E. Right. Okay? You'll so get them in I the ultimate... To- You'll get them in the ultimate enzymes, by the way. Okay, you'll get some bile acids in the ultimate enzymes from longevity. A lot of digestive enzyme products will contain bile acids, but I always recommend people take extra bile acids. And oh, by the way, cholesterol, uh, bile comes from cholesterol. So there's another reason why you don't want to lower your cholesterol by taking a statin drug, because you'll be suppressing bile production, which means less fat absorption. I always recommend that if you have some kind of a fat malabsorption issue, digestive issue, you're missing a gallbladder, you're, you've got some liver, liver problems, Really, everybody will benefit from these things, but especially if you're dealing with digestive health uh, issues, that you take extra bile, B-I-L-E, acids or bile salts. And if they don't know what they are, I- I'm shocked because it's a pretty easy nutritional supplement. Just Google it. Go to Amazon. B-I-L-E, bile salts or bile acids. Well, um, oh. I, I like to buy off, the, you know, walk into the store. I, I will go online if I have to, but um, Vitamin Cottage, that you mentioned, your local Vitamin Cottage has yeah. Well, the vitamin cottage that I went to said if you could give them a brand name, they would order it for me. Jaro, J-A-R-R-O-W, bile acid factors. Thank you and, so much. And it's also, there's, sometimes it, call, it gets called ox bile also. It has different names. I guess that's probably why it's confusing. Bile uh-huh. acid factors, ox bile, bile acids. And they're usually a component of digestive enzymes, but I always recommend people take a little extra if they've got uh, fat malabsorption issues, which is a lot of folks. Mary, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a couple more calls in, okay? I'm going to let you go. Thank you so much for your call. Anything, anything, oh, by the way, lecithin is also a component of bile, so you can use lecithin too. All right. Take care, Mary. I don't know if you, we lost Mary there. All right. Let's move on to Carol in Washington. Good morning, Carol. Welcome to the Bright Side. Hi. Thanks, Ben. Hey, what's uh, going on? I'm... I'm I'm in my early seventies, five foot eight and a half, hundred thirty seven pounds. Eat nice, organic. You're lean and mean. For, You're lean and mean. Are, are you act, are you working out? No, just taking care of the yard. Okay, well, that's good. That. That's good. Yeah. What's going? I what's going on? I haven't eaten out over over two years. I have I have uh, developed a strange muscle pain in my right arm usually sometimes okay. on my left okay. that comes on anywhere between 12 p.m. when I'm in bed and 3 a.m. when and usually in the upper part of the arm and but it has gone down to my wrist and it doesn't seem to matter what position I am mm. in makes no difference uh, DMSO helps a lot uh, I went to a physical therapist uh, because my sciatica returned after about 10 to 15 years and uh, he said that I have a slight start, of, uh, along with our uh, sciatica, a slight start of arthritic uh, arthritis in my left hip. Okay. So when I try to take care of myself and eat well, what's going on? Okay, there's a couple things that you might want to do. You may be, you know, eating well is a kind of relative term. You can eat well compared to most people, but if you're not getting all the nutrition that you need, and it's very difficult to do that if you're not supplementing, uh, it's very difficult to get nutrients, especially fatty nutrients, which are important for muscles. Uh, So I'd be doing uh, vitamin E for if you're not already. I'm assuming you're not doing anything, so I'm just going to tell you, give you some ideas here. No, I take A, B, C, D, E, iodine, niacinamide, lithium, orate, vinegar with my meals, and I I have uh, hypothyroid diagnosed uh, 30 years ago, but I take no meds for it. Okay, okay. well, the hypothyroid 
I'm going to assume that you're hypothyroid, although testing doesn't necessarily mean you are, but let's just say you are hypothyroid. It's very common as we get older. That will suppress the body's ability to heal and recover. It can also be due to elevated cortisol, which happens as we get older. Stress hormone, that is, cortisol goes up. So a couple of things that you might want to do. If you're not doing 400 IU of vitamin E, start doing that. And then throw in some alpha lipoic acid, which is one of my favorite supplements for post-workout. It'll also help you with sore muscles and and, uh, kind of joint pain, that sort of thing. Uh, Chicken soup, bone soup with cartilage. Make your own homemade chicken soup using cartilage. That's another thing. Could I interject really quick? I I cook up uh, chicken feet, a whole package, at least once a month, and eat the chicken feet and use the broth. Awesome, awesome. Stay on that. Put, Put a little apple cider vinegar or a little lemon juice or something in there to... I need to make sure that good for you. So stay on that. Try some aloe vera as well. That might help you. Get on the Fucoid Z. If you're not already doing the longevity products, I would be getting on the Fucoid Z. Sipping on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine as well. Make sure you're using generous, and by generous, I mean lots of omega 6 and omega 3 fats, particularly omega 3s. If you want capsules, there's none better than the ultimate EFAs from longevity maybe 9 or 12 a day. If you want the liquid, get on Udo's Blend, which is my favorite liquid essential fatty acid. Also, you might want to throw in a little fish oil. Fish oil is not the same as your uh, as your essential fatty acids that come from flax. They're a little bit different, so you want to have both. Uh, fish oil, I like Carlson's Lemon Flavored or Nordic Naturals That's makes a I good use. one. Okay, yeah. good for you. Stay on that, and then maybe throw in some of the Udo's Blend as well. Now, the hypothyroidism is telling me there might be, you might have a gut problem. That is the That's the main reason why people are hypothyroid. Make sure you're using probiotics. There's a very important relationship between fat absorption and gut bacteria. So make sure that you're supporting intestinal health using probiotics. So the ultimate nightly essence is my favorite. And then also uh, grinding your, uh, doing a, I've been talking about a, a fiber beverage where you do flaxseed and chia seed. And that can also help support the microbiome, the gut bacteria. Uh, You also don't want to underestimate the power of stretching and yoga and movement using, even if it feels sore, sometimes as we get older, the connective tissue begins to contract. And when this connective tissue contracts, it can start to cause some nerve pain. And you may be dealing with some of that. So doing stretching exercises or yoga, you don't necessarily, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. You can just get on YouTube and look up some stretching exercises and do those. That can help you. And even a little bit of resistance training might be in your interest. So in addition to working nutritionally, in addition to working with your diet, you also want to work physically with the actual muscles and the connective tissue itself by doing stretching exercises. And by the way, that's true for anybody dealing with neuropathy or any kind of joint pain. There's some tremendous benefits to stretching the connective tissue. The connective tissue grows and repairs itself in response to movement. So making sure that you're moving and stretching and uh, that, that area itself can have some benefits. You may want to find a therapist who can help you or even just massage regularly. That might help you as well. Carol, I'm just out of time here. I want to try to squeeze one Thank more you. call in. Thanks so much. God bless you. Hey, I know, Carl, you've been holding on forever, Truth Raider. Can I give you – I only got about 30 seconds, though. Is that, too, is that going to be enough time for you? I want to give my testimony. I I know. I meant to get you. I, I meant. To, I know. I saw you there. I apologize, Carl. I'm gonna get. You. Call me tomorrow. I'll get you first up. I promise. I apologize, buddy. Thank you for the call, though. Thanks for calling in. All right. That's all the time we have for today. And I'm, I do apologize for leaving folks on hold. We had a full board today, and the phones kept ringing. I guess I hit a nerve with this, with our statin drug discussion. Tomorrow we'll continue talking cholesterol. We'll talk homocysteine. We'll talk NAC. We'll talk real strategies for heart disease to prevent it and to recover from it if you're dealing with it. Thanks for listening to the Bright Side, friends. I'm pharmacist Ben. Have a wonderful, beautiful, spectacular, awesome day. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye for now.